Hi everyone, my name is Philippe Cobal and I will explain uh, how I built uh, a JavaScript robot controller running on LaTeX. So it's a basic robot like this one, it's not a humanoid or something more advanced. And first I, went, I, I really wish that uh, everyone, I just hope that everyone is fine for this LaTeX uh, online workshop and I really want to thank everyone who has been involved to relocate this event from Tokyo to online. So thanks again. Let me introduce myself. So I'm Philippe Koval. I'm a software engineer from, I'm based in France. And I've been long time open source contributor on Linux Debian and currently uh, part of uh, Mozilla Reps uh, and working on IoT projects. I've been previously involved into uh, industry operating systems from the industry open source one like uh, Tizen. Uh, when I worked for Intel, then I explored Yocto for automotive, and then I joined Samsung to work on uh, open connectivity reference implementation called IoTVT. So you can reach me at this address, and uh, I'm available on other channels also. And I shared a lot of uh, materials before, some presentation, videos, demo, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep uh, up to date uh, community about what I am hacking on, and if you like. Uh, what I am doing, feel free to to reach me, and I'm currently available for hire or just cooperate on either open source or not projects. So let me now mention that uh, I will not speak about the state of the art in robotics. If you really want to do serious robotics, you probably need to focus on hard real-time features to build a critical system. I can suggest uh, ROS, the Robotic Operating System from Robotics Foundation, which is a good base to build uh, robots. And uh, yeah, it's mostly about an experimentation to uh, merge uh, IoT device and the virtual world. I will explain and show some demonstration at the end of the presentation. But yeah, do not reproduce this in a critical context. So this is not intended uh, for this. It's more a proof of concept uh, demonstration. So the challenge uh, I'm trying to address is how can I build a robot running on JavaScript? This mean can be developed and simulated on a Linux system, which is more comfortable than a very uh, weak microcontroller, but the same application should be deployed to a microcontroller supporting a NATX operating system. So the target I use is this uh, development board for ST. I will explain the details about this uh, and then uh, so application running on this board can be controlled from other application, like an IoT gateway from a web browser, a mobile app, or even a virtual world with a VR headset. So that's a, the concept I've been trying to explore. So the robot itself, uh, I just here, is uh, you can order this as a kit from me. Um, I think they just release a, a version. It's a very basic, it's the only piece of plastic made of uh, laser cutters, but uh, it has four different uh, servo motors like this one. Uh, it's quite, um, but it's, it's something intended for education or you will not uh, create um, a real uh, use case of this robot as far as I know, but it's really, it's really interesting to get started. And each servo motors are connected by a power supply and you have also the ground and this uh, pulse switch modulation signal which is a, a, a frequency which is a fixed one at uh, 50 Hertz and uh, you just uh, need to adjust the duty cycle period and uh, it can move from one angle to minus uh, uh, 90 degrees to plus 90 degrees that's how it works and I will explain uh, now uh, how I did this uh, on NATX operating system. So just a quick recap about uh, NATX. Most of you know about this, but what uh, the interesting feature I want to highlight is that it's a project committed to comply standards. This means you have the POSIX and NCC API, uh, BSD socket also, and it's a, it's a file based uh, for input input like uh, most uh, Unix system. And uh, yeah, I from, uh, as a Linux user, I was quite, uh, had the feeling to feel at home on this uh, one. For this to it has been released a long time ago by Gregory Nutt. And uh, this year, it has been incubated by the IPH Foundation. 
and also this project is based for other derivative project. Uh, when I was at Samsung, I work on Tyson RT on the Arctic board. Uh, also, there is another project that target uh, drones, and uh, Sony is also using Natex on his uh, S Presence uh, platform, and uh, most of Strange are upstreaming into Natex, so that's pretty cool. Thanks. And uh, the microcontroller I've been using, you need to uh, have uh, at least uh, four different hardware PWM signal. So you can do this in software by playing with G G G GPIO port, but it's not uh, very accurate. So I suggest to rely on uh, hardware ones. I needed connectivity. Uh, I wanted something on Ethernet because it's more, so it's more reliable for Wi-Fi, especially if you are making demonstration on other places where Wi-Fi is not reliable, I wanted to have a hard connectivity, and I needed uh, some memory. In at least uh, 200k was uh, far enough for an unoptimized un 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 uh, JavaScript application. So I used this board from uh, ST uh, Microelectronics. It's uh, based on the their STM32 F7. Uh, uh, platform. It's a uh, Cortex uh, M7 CPU from ARM, and uh, it has a lot of RAM. I have uh, 320k of RAM and 2 megabytes of flash, so that's a lot. I could put a lot of uh, JavaScript on it. I will explain about this. And all the e input output, so I have. Uh, it was quite uh, interesting to use this board, but unfortunately. It was not supported by Nutex, so I had to make the port. I was lucky because somebody at the time was just has just been uh, upstream the CPU uh, support in it, but there is almost uh, non board uh, supporting it. So I had to commit uh, some patches that uh, had the mapping for this board. So I was inspired by another older board, you know, the 32F1 series. So this one is uh, the seventh generation later, but it features the same uh, the same feature like a general input output, uh, analog input output, uh, PWM signal, RAMFS and SPI and so on. And it was released in uh, Natex uh, 731. I think it was maybe more than one year, one year and a half ago. And uh, yeah, to use it, that's pretty easy. I just need to connect uh, each servo motor to each pin PWM pin. So there is four PWM uh, device. So if you look at the Unix convention, they start by uh, number zero, but uh, on the ST world, it starts by one. So there is just a, a shift by one to um, make it uh, to align. So yeah, if you want to replicate, that's the pins I've been using. I didn't use a supply from the board. I use an external supply of five volt uh, for the each uh, servo motors, but the ground is uh, is uh, connected to the board. Okay, so I was lucky to to generate uh, this PDBM signal because the Notex shipped uh, um, a sample application that can uh, test uh, PWM uh, generation. So yeah. I'm just uh, plugging a, a software oscilloscope on one of the spins, and I've been measuring this uh, frequency. Here is a 50% uh, duty cycle. Now I want to speak about something uh, different. Uh, yeah, I mentioned about JavaScript. So, uh, what about uh, running scripts on microcontrollers? So there is different languages, uh, like uh, Lua or MicroPython on JavaScript, and uh, the most uh, interesting uh, feature of using scripted language by because it's faster to develop it can be faster to deploy to customize eventually you don't have to rebuild the whole firmware and uh, if you have validated the system you just need to updo update uh, some uh, parameters in your scripts so or just add some logic and also something from a security perspective that you can isolate application uh, in by running them on virtual machines, so you can have uh, some resource uh, restriction if you want uh, to get access to some parts and not others, and so on. So it can limit uh, the access to the resource if uh, your system is not working as uh, in a secure context. 
Uh, JavaScript uh, is a language I um, will speak about, so it's known to run on the browser, so that's the language of the web, but not only, because now with uh, Node.js, this uh, language uh, extends to a very huge ecosystem, there are many developers who are uh, available to create uh, LS applications, so you have virtually a lot of packages using uh, NPM uh, repository, so you can build a lot of different uh, kind of application, but um, none of them are ready. The node ecosystem is not yet ready for a microcontroller, so it's our different uh, low footprint uh, JavaScript uh, interpreter. So I will speak today about JavaScript, but there is also others like uh, Fabrice Bella released uh, QuickJS, and also I know there is a Esprino software, which is also targeting uh, STM32 uh, boards, not on the text. But uh, yeah, it can be interesting to compare. So I'm going to speak about uh, JavaScript and specifically uh, the IoT GS runtime. So if you know Node.js, that's quite the same. Node.js uh, use a V8 uh, JavaScript interpreter. We are using JavaScript interpreter. It's not modern JavaScript. It's uh, old school JavaScript, but you can do a lot of things, believe me. And uh, yeah, if you have Node.js for running a uh, script here, we have IoTGS, that's uh, the same concept. But the footprint is very more limited. So you can make uh, some basic applications that can fit into uh, 180 K of uh, Flash. And uh, yeah, you can fit in less than uh, 32 K of RAM. That's pretty, uh, pretty small. And uh, the design of this project is that uh, you have the runtime, the JavaScript interpreter, and then additional built-in modules to deal with uh, input-output, like uh, uh, digital or analog ports, PWVM, I2C, SPI buses, or serial port. And also it features some networking uh, modules, like TCP IP. On top of it, you have HTTP, HTTPS with a TLS encryption. Uh, WebSocket are also supported. That can be interesting if you need to have some real-time feature. Also, DNS for resolution and uh, MQTT, which is another IoT protocol, which is quite popular, and Bluetooth Low Energy and extra system modules. Uh, something inter also interesting because on this base you can create uh, external JavaScript modules. So the sky then is a limit. You can do anything you can as long it can fit into your memory. So to use it, that's uh, we have uh, Linux support. You can also, if you are running Debian or Ubuntu, just run apt-get install and you get it because I made the package for the community. And uh, Tizen profiles are kind of supported, of course, um, which is another Linux-based uh, um, system. Nutex, which is a reference uh, system for microcontroller and it's fork called Tizen RT2. So how to do IoTGS and Nutix uh, play together? So IoTGS is hosted outside the Nutix on a GitHub, but you can just add this uh, extra external module as a, a Nutix application. So you just need to tweak some uh, script to uh, build it. It's not straightforward because it's, you need to build it in uh, two paths at least. So yeah, I can explain how to do this in detail if you ask, uh, if you're blocked, uh, ask me. So there is only one board supported. Uh, it's is the STM32 F4 Discovery, which is quite popular among uh, developers. And also the RTX 05X uh, board uh, for the Tizen RT. That's uh, only the two microcontroller systems supported. And uh, to use it, then you don't need to just store your JavaScript uh, main application on your RAMFS partition and then just uh, start uh, the application from, from uh, IoTGS uh, interpreter. So if you need connectivity, maybe you can just start this after uh, the DHCP query from uh, NSH uh, script. That's how I use it. Uh, so, in this case, uh, IoTGS only supported one board, so I had to add uh, an extra module, like I did for NetTax. I had to do the same IoTGS side, but it's much uh, easier. 
I was inspired by the other reference uh, board, the STM32F41, and I added to uh, initialize uh, input output on all the buses for digital or analog, uh, or also timers for PWM. And uh, all those uh, functions are using uh, STM32 um, API inside the Nutex. So everything is factorized. Uh, among different boards so yeah that's uh, how it works and uh, then I added some extra JavaScript module which is not uh, related to, to Nutex here that's mostly pure JavaScript and uh, the first one is uh, IoT GS Express so it's uh, I re-implemented something close to Node uh, Express module but I made it uh, way uh, sim I simplified it and uh, with this you can build a REST API so that can be convenient if you want to share the resource on uh, HTTP and on top of this module I made another one which is a port of the Node.js uh, WebSync module I will explain about this in later but uh, that's a way to describe uh, what uh, my uh, device is composed of so yeah let me explain uh, how kind of here's my Notex, um, my Nucleo board is composed by four different resources like uh, one PWM tin, when I can adjust the duty cycle, also I have a pin for analog input and also on off uh, input uh, uh, GPIO output actually. Uh, so, what are web things? So, it's a software on platform from Mozilla but it has been built with privacy by design how does it work so most uh, many op um, IoT system or smart home system are using the cloud and Mozilla made a to total opposite choice they wanted to have everything working inside the user home this means in the, on the, on inside the user, user local network this means no, thing will, no, 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 no third party will be involved and every communication will stay inside the LAN. So no data is going outside, everything is stay home. And it was inspired by what the, the web consortium W3C working group web of things has been specified uh, how can uh, web technology applies to IoT context also. It's mostly made for maybe not for users like uh, you used to do as uh, browsing the web and view HTML5 and apps and so on it's mostly to reuse web protocols from web services and so on and try to apply to IoT context so Mozilla also providing a framework to build the web things I will explain a bit uh, about um, it later so each things are described using a, a schema so it's a JSON description about what the thing is made of you can build this uh, schema using uh, Node.js, Python, Rust, Arduino or other languages and I made uh, the IoTGS uh, port from the Node.js one which is simplified to make it fit into this uh, kind of uh, low-end devices so then each things can be connected together on Mozilla IoT WebSync Gateway. It's running on a Raspberry Pi, but you can run on the Linux system. And from this, you have this uh, UI I've just shown where you can control all the things from a web browser, a mobile phone, from a progressive web app. And also, you can do some automation between uh, all the different things. So now I show how the things are described. So this is a JSON description. So if I just made the request on, on uh, the default endpoint, I have a list of different properties. So the first one here is a arm angle, which is a, um, a properties moving my uh, angle of my arm. It's between uh, minus uh, uh, 19 and plus uh, 90 degrees. And it's just a rotary actuator for this uh, PWM2 uh, uh, device and there is also the other one so if you make a, a request on the slash properties endpoint you have different uh, all the different uh, uh, all the different uh, servo motors which are zero by default and if I want to change one value 
I just need to send a, a query, a, a put a verb on this uh, endpoint with a JSON parameter describing the name of the property and the value of property and it will update uh, this uh, duty cycle to uh, move by 42 degrees. That's simple. And on top of this we can make uh, some uh, demonstration. So here um, here is my robot and uh, oh, let me start from the beginning. So here is the demonstration I made. Uh, so from this side we have this uh, four different uh, angles we are moving on this robot and I also made uh, uh, a simulation in 3D world which is moving at the same time so both are connected to my Mozilla IT gateway and they are uh, working at the same so from this you can create some uh, new rules like uh, I can like, let's try to change uh, one properties of the robot and if I press on the robot approaching button then I move my shoulder by 45 degrees and the arm on the, by minus and turn on the light which is something different I created another rules where um, if uh, the button is not pressed I just move back the same so here is a button if I'm pressing on it it will just move uh, close to the light which has been turned on and I have the same into my simulator and here is a sensor on top of my robot which is measuring the color of the light. So if I change the color to something green, I look back to my sensor UI and it's moving to something greenish. Uh, yeah, so now I can move back and it's updated at the same time. So yeah, we have the, we can do also the same dashboard in a VR world like this one. I can also control the the this uh, switch from uh, another view so another demonstration here so that's the first one i made so here is uh, the same robot so i've been uh, connecting uh, each uh, servo motors and i have the same model which is updating at the same time So in this case, there are interest of uh, making a, a digital twin, so a 3D model which is replicating the actual thing is that you maybe can uh, simulate the device before having it or just implementing it. And also you can just look around if there is, if, if it works in your environment. Let's say if you have another robot which is supposed to cooperate with another one, you make, make you should make sure there is no no collision and there is no conflict and they are working together so one way to do this is also using a VR headset where you can decide to look around this uh, object if specifically if it's a very small one you can just uh, adjust uh, the size so yeah that's mostly a proof of concept So it's not a one-to-one -one, uh, simulation. It's not that smooth because uh, there is only the key, the key, the key in the animation. There is no no details. So maybe to do this better, maybe we should put some uh, accelerator sensor on the device and see how how they uh, what is the actual position and trying to update accordingly. So everything is open source. You can download the source code on GitHub. I shared it as a demonstration. And yeah, if there is uh, any, if you want to replicate, I, I think I shared everything. So by the short summary, so the robot itself is composed only of uh, four several motors, each of them controlled by one PWM signal. And uh, those signals are coming out from this uh, board from which is a STM32 F7. And then you can make a JavaScript application in on the microcontroller to control this uh, PWM signal, or also uh, make uh, it uh, running uh, with other applications. So the application running on the microcontroller is interpreted by JavaScript uh, and IoTGS runtime, which is uh, supporting uh, NATEX uh, operating system with uh, built-in module for hardware, uh, input-output, and network. 
and then on top of this there is this extra application uh, called uh, uh, WebSync IoT GS uh, which exposes the angles uh, using HTTP REST uh, API so this can be used uh, remotely and you can of course uh, generate uh, the control signal to move the servo motors so yeah here are some uh, some link about um, what I've been doing on this uh, Web of Twins project I will probably share more updates so feel free to interact it's uh, on uh, the Fediverse so I'm trying to keep you updated this robot um, as a source uh, shared on the github also and of course Natex if you want to to build the world uh, operating system and uh, yeah that's it and uh, yeah feel free to to contact me or ask any question during this workshop I will try to be available for you by chat I believe and uh, if not uh, yeah feel free to reach me uh, online uh, I'm I will try to give you some hints and you can report uh, issue on uh, github if uh, there is some uh, new if you have new ideas let me know yes yeah, thank you everyone and uh, yeah it's really cool to have this uh, Natex online workshop uh, this year 2020 and uh, goodbye